So next up on the list of port reviews is Final Fantasy XIII. Final Fantasy XIII can be played on PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and on PC. We have two primary topics of differences to discuss. There's overseas changes, and then there's platform technical differences. There's a lot to mention about the PC ports as well, including fan patches and which DLC from the console versions are available. There are very minimal gameplay differences to discuss throughout. Content and graphical differences are where most of the changes are. And so we'll get started with the overseas changes. The localization changed a lot of already English terminology between all three games. 13 and 13.2 on consoles do not have dual audio, and for Lightning Returns, Japanese voices are a paid option. Additionally though, the Chinese version of 13 and 13.2 offer Japanese voice acting with English text, as well as traditional and simplified Chinese and Korean. Good luck finding the physical version of 13, though 13.2 is on the Hong Kong PSN store. Also, the overseas versions have some different vocal tracks where either the lyrics were changed, translated, removed, or they're outright different songs, mostly with 13. For 13 itself, outside of the original Japanese version, you can't move with the shroud menu open anymore, Synergist Party Members AI will prioritize haste more often and end spells less, some monsters like Ochu enemies aren't vulnerable to preemptive strikes anymore, and the damage doubled when hitting a dazed target is calculated before the damage cap, rather other than after. 13 in Japan was updated on PS3 and on Xbox re-released as an international version where the non-localization changes were added. Additionally for this update, an easy mode was introduced that reduces enemy HP, staggered enemies take more damage, doom counters give more time, and common item drops drop more often, but rare item drop drop rates were decreased. Easy mode was never patched into the US versions either. For Lightning Returns, there's some noted minor dialogue changes changes in the localization with slightly tweaked implications. So now we can move on to the platform differences. 13 was originally designed for PS3, and the hangups with the 360 version on a technical level show that. But thanks to backwards compatibility, that's not the end of the story for Xbox. So on PS3, 13 is one disc at a file size of 37.6 gigabytes and 720p resolution. 13.2 at 14 gigabytes and Lightning Returns at 9 gigabytes have 1080p CG cutscenes. On the Xbox 360, 13 has three discs at 18.3 gigabytes total, and the game is 576p, while the cutscenes are 720p with severe compression. 13.2 at 7.7 gigabytes and Lightning Return at 4.7 gigabytes are one disc each and are 720p. On both platforms, 13 and 13.2 are 30 FPS with gameplay, and the PS3's menus for both are 60, but on 360, only 13.2's menus are 60. Lightning Returns is 30 FPS everywhere. Also on both platforms, all three games suffer inconsistent frame rates. 13 on 360 is slightly more stable, but otherwise, PS3 edges out visually compared to the 360. On Xbox One and One S, the resolution is still 576p, while Xbox One X is 1728p. 13.2, now 8.4GB, and Lightning Returns, now 7.2GB, remain 720p on One S, but on One X, they're natively 4K. Now the original cutscene assets for 13 were re-implemented, and because of this, the game is now over 30 gigabytes. While the file size is about twice as large, cutscenes are substantially higher quality. All three games are now hard capped at a more stable 30 FPS, so 13.2's menus aren't 60 anymore. The 1S isn't as stable as the 1X, though its stability is still closer to the 1X than it is to the 360 versions. Final Fantasy XIII is 1152p on Xbox Series S and 1728 on Xbox Series X. For 13.2 and Lightning Returns, they're both 1440p on Series S and 4K on Series X, all hard capped at a stable 30 FPS. Both 13.2 and Lightning Returns support FPS boost, though in Lightning Returns it's not a stable 60 FPS and there's quirks with it, such as the camera during chocobo races. FPS boost still gave me some issues with 13.2 as well. Otherwise, yeah, Xbox Series or Xbox One offer the most stable and high resolution console versions of all all three games. There's also cloud versions of 13 and 13.2 in Japan on Android and iOS, which seem based on the PC version capped at 30 FPS. 
And now we come to the PC versions. Please take note that the rest of this video is spent on the PC ports. The summation going in is that 13 is fine with fanfixes, 13.2 performs rough even with fanfixes, and Lightning Returns doesn't have the same fanfixes and is the most playable out of the box. 13 is up to 60 gigabytes, 13.2 is 27 gigabytes, and Lightning Returns is 20. The PC port is the only way to play 13 at 60 FPS. These versions support many resolutions, but pre-rendered cutscenes are still 720p or 1080p and have compression comparable to the 360. The pre-rendered cutscenes are also a bit darker and they have slightly lower audio quality. Exclusive to the PC versions are built-in dual language options, limited control customization, 13 International's easy difficulty option, and 13 and 13.2 have graphics options for anti-aliasing and shadow resolution, which are their only graphics options. Lightning Returns, on the other hand, has a handful of options to tweak. And outside of the pre-rendered cutscenes, audio in general is higher quality than on consoles. For 13.2 on PC, opting for the Japanese voiceover changes the song Unseen Intruder to Japanese, which isn't the sort of change seen with the other games. Additionally, the Eternal Crystal you got for having save data of 13 is given to you by default on PC. For Lightning Returns, you can't rename schematas, map markers, or the Angel of Valhalla anymore. Now, 13.2 and Lightning Returns had DLC on consoles, and almost all of that DLC is included on PC for them with exceptions due to things such as licensing. 13.2 is missing the crossover Assassin's Creed and Mass Effect DLC along with some pre-order bonuses and Japan exclusive accessories. Lightning Returns is missing 14 adornments, the Midgar Flower girl outfit and the Siegfried outfit, which was obtained by submitting your score from the Lightning Returns demo to the Outer World services. This service was discontinued in 2016, so you can't legitimately get this armor in any version today. Now I don't think I can condone this because I think it's technically piracy, at least for some of these outfits, but you can restore these outfits to the PC versions through mods. There's all sorts of minor UI, transparency, and effect issues with all three games, but most Mostly with 13. The best example, or rather the worst example, is in 13 where the enemy intel is cut off if you're at 1080p or higher. Concerning 13 shadow setting, the highest setting shadows are really sharp and deviate from the intended look, so consider using 4096 at most. You could also change anisotropic filtering through the NVIDIA control panel, which is nice since the Xbox One and series have it higher too. Performance-wise, these games are rough around the edges to say the least. Keep in mind that the performance you get out of these ports can vary dramatically depending on your hardware, compatibility, and your tolerance. I don't mean more powerful hardware will save you either. Even on modern hardware, there may be frame rate drops for all three games, especially if you're trying to push something like 4K. Your mileage and experience may vary. Also, just like 13.2's Chocobo races, Lightning Returns has some FPS issues as well, where at higher frame rates there's a few things in the game that you can't interact with that requires saving the game, changing the frame rate setting, and then reloading your save. I tried to replicate these issues on Xbox with FPS boost and couldn't, so these do seem to be PC exclusive bugs. But yeah, admittedly, these caveats are an annoyance and inconvenient. There's an overly aggressive frame pacer built in, the game scans for new controllers every second, they don't use your display's refresh rate, and the ports aren't large address aware, so they only use 2GB of RAM. Which really doesn't matter for 13 unless you're modding, but it is the reason that 13.2 can crash often. There is a fanfix for the performance and resolution issues of 13 and 13.2 that addresses all of the issues I listed. Considering 1080p has issues, I'd consider the fix mandatory for the Steam versions. Additionally, for any further problems, I always recommend PC players consult the PC Gaming Wiki, which is rich in troubleshooting info and even some mod recommendations. Some general recommendations I would provide are uncompressed FMVs, restore the Japanese music, button prompts to match your controller, ultra-wide support Support, fan translations, effect fixes for things like rain in 13.2, any subtitle language, and HD models and textures. So at minimum you can use FF13 fix and patch in large address awareness to take care of the performance and crashing, and then you could go the extra mile and set up some mods. That at least covers 13 and 13.2 though. For lightning returns all you can really do is tweak settings and pray. 
and we also have the Microsoft Store versions of the games which are different builds that have additional launchers. So the Microsoft Store versions of 13 and 13.2 have more stable frame rates, less frequent crashing and less stuttering, and less UI issues at 1080p, but unfortunately some UI and effect issues are still present at 1440p and higher. Lending returns in my experience is mostly identical, though I have read folks having issues with it anyway. Lastly, you cannot mod the Microsoft Store versions of the games either. So for console players, the answer to which versions of the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy games you may play may be simple given the content and gameplay parity between PS3 and Xbox. While XIII was originally made for PS3, the Xbox One and Series versions shine due to more stable frame rates, with the One X and Series X pushing the resolution. Meanwhile, thanks to including almost all the DLC and mods from the community, the PC version can shine even further with some extra work, at least bearing in mind the caveats. I would also keep my playtime under 2 hours just in case. The Microsoft Store versions are more stable out of the box, but if you're playing at 1440p, you can't fix the worst of the UI issues. I'd have to say that the Steam versions are a safer bet on PC, just keep in mind that's only because they should be fixed with fan fixes and optional mods. If you're not up for the extra work, the Xbox version is there. And remember as well that Final Fantasy XIII was one of the best looking games of its generation, and it still aged remarkably well, and the PS3 seriously still does it justice, and it's crazy looking back how much the PS3 was actually capable of. So in other words, there's no wrong way for you to play the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, so long as you enjoy the experience. That about does it for the 13 trilogy, as you saw it's a very different situation from the other games. Anyway, we've got a busy rest of the year so stay tuned. You can support the channel through Patreon and find updates there or on Twitter. So till next time, thanks for watching.